have like one slide on data center TCP because those things together explain why we need accurate ECN, which is uh, a different feedback mechanism for ECN. And then I have a second part of my talk where I show some measurement results on the deployment state of ECN, what the problems are, where we are currently. So um, explicit congestion notification is a TCP IP extension to uh, provide congestion marking. So on a high level, that means if, you, if your traffic is ECN capable, then a router that is congested can mark your packet and tell the endpoint to slow down instead of dropping packets. So if everything went well, you don't have any packet drops anymore. That would be great. Um, ECN uh, is implemented in most of the operating systems, um, but it's not turned on by default. It's usually um, running in so-called server mode, which means um, it your machine will not ask for ECN during the TCP handshake, but if somebody else asks your machine to do ECN, it will negotiate it with it. So only this, the server basically does ECN by default, but nobody will ever ask for ECN support. Um, the reason why we have the server mode is because initially there were some deployment problems. Initially, um, people were excited about it, they turned ECN, they implemented it, they turned ECN on by default on all connections, and then there were some weird home routers who never seen this bit, and they would just reboot. And your connection is gone, and everything's gone right, and then you try again and your machine would reboot again. So that was very unfortunate, and so um, you find on the internet, you find like wide widespread device to just turn off ECN because that makes everything better. Um, okay, now we go a little bit into detail. So ECN, first of all, you have to negotiate it on the handshake because both of the endpoints have to support it. So you as a sender, you will mark your packets as ECN capable, but the receiver on the other end will actually see if there was congestion on the link and has to tell you about it. So you have to know that the other end is supporting ECN, other otherwise you cannot use it. Um, if both endpoints support ECN, then the sender can decide to set a certain code point in the, in the IP header to tell the network device that this packet is ECN capable and you can mark it instead of dropping it if you are congested. And um, so there are different code points in the IP header. Uh, there are two code points which are called ECT, ECN capable transport. And there's one code point that is called uh, CE, so congestion experience, and that's the code point that the the router can set. Um, yeah, actually that's what I just said. Basically you have, this is kind of um, the TCP header and in the TCP header you have like all these flags and you have two flags belonging to ECN and in the IP header you have the diff surf code point field here and you also have two bits here which form together on another code point and that's the ECN code point. So basically you have four code points. One means I'm not ECN capable, two of them mean I'm ECN capable and the fourth one means uh, I'm like the router was congested. Um, so how does the feedback work? Because that's where accurate ECN comes into play. So let's assume we have a sender receiver both uh, are ECN enabled and the sender is continuously sending data to the receiver. At some point, uh, this network node decides uh, I'm congested, I want to mark this one packet that is marked in red right now. And then this packet at some point is received by the receiver, so the receiver knows now, knows now that there's congestion and has to tell the sender about it. And what it does is, it uses one of the flags in the TCP header and sets the flag, the flag. And it sets the flag on every acknowledgement until it gets confirmation from the sender that this was actually to make sure that the congestion signal is really received by the sender and cannot be lost. Um, as soon as the sender <coughs> receives a, uh, an acknowledgement with the ECE flag set, it uses the other TCP flag we have um, on the next data packet, so that's the uh, um, CWR, the congestion to reduce flag, and tells the receiver that it actually receives the signal. And it does it for every ECE it receives. So basically, where we end up here is that for one marking, you send like a whole window of um, ECE markings to the sender, and the sender sends a whole marking of CWR markings back to the receiver. And what that means is that the receiver only knows that there was some congestion during this round of time, but it doesn't know how many congestion markings have been appeared. Um, so effectively, this is not a problem for today's congestion control because congestion control will only react, react once per round of time to congestion. So it doesn't really matter if there's another marking appearing during this round of time. But there are currently more modern congestion controls which take this level of congestion into account because it actually gives you some additional information. It actually let, lets you know if there's like 
uh, a lot of congestion or just a little bit of congestion and you can adapt your behavior to. And like one of those examples is basically data center TCP. Data center TCP is developed for data centers. You cannot just use it on the internet. It will um, take all the capacity away from other traffic. But like the principle is something that modern congestion controls won't want to do. Um, and what you have here is that congestion control usually does this kind of multiplicative decrease when it gets a congestion signal. So that means you have your window, you have a multiplier, and when you get a congestion signal, you just reduce your window. And in Reno, that's like a fixed multiplier of 0.5, so we have your window. In cubic, it's a little bit less, it's 0.7, so you reduce less. Um, but it's always a fixed value. And the, uh, what data center TCP does different here, here is that it actually calculates the alpha value dynamically based on the number of markings it has seen during the last round of, uh, the last round of time. So it might be whatever, it might be 0.9, it might be 0.5, somewhere in between, depending on the congestion level. And that's the information we want to have and we currently don't have an ECN. And that's the part where accurate ECN comes into, into the game. So with accurate ECN, another nice thing is that it actually negotiated during the handshake, which is also not the case for data center TCP. Data center TCP, because it needs this information, has just adapted the feedback scheme of ECN in some way, but um, they don't negotiate it, and you have to be sure that in your data center, all systems are configured to use data center TCP, otherwise it will break. Actually, it's, it nicely will not break completely, but it, you will not have any benefits anymore if they are not configured um, correctly. So, with accurate ECN, we actually use an additional flag in the TCP header. And this flag, if you, if you have looked up, uh, if you have watched out, this was previously called NS. So that was already used for ECN, for ECN nonce. However, the ECN nonce um, extension was never really deployed and is now deprecated. So we basically just re reuse this bit for a different purpose here. And we use it to negotiate um, accurate ECN in a backward compatible way in the handshake. Um, later on, when East accurate ECN is successfully negotiated, we don't use those flags anymore. We just use all three bits we have as like one field. And this field always reflects a counter of the number of CE packets we've seen. Um, so it's only three bits, it's not that much, but also usually you don't see so many EC uh, markings during one round of time. So even if a couple of eggs get lost or whatever, this should still be accurate enough to give you the right information. And if you even need more um, accurate information, there's, there's also an option. So um, this counter is just like a per packet counter of number of markings you've seen. And the accurate ECN option even provides a per byte counter of marked bytes you've seen. So it's like even more accurate. And it's not only the CE markings, it also provides you information about how many ETC1 and ETC0 markings have, have been. So you can even do something like um, easy and non if you want to do it, so some kind of interior checking or whatever. Um, it leaves op space open for new mechanisms to use this information. So that's basically what accurate ECN is. It just changes the feedback from the receiver to the sender to provide more information. Um, this is currently, and it was not on any slide, this is currently, this is graph in the IETF, it's currently uh, in like the last stage of publication, so it will be in RFC soon. So it's probably the right point of time to think about uh, a Linux implementation right now. I have like proof of concept implementation out there. It kind of works, it's not well tested. <laughs> uh, probably needs some cleanup. Um, what I did with implementation is that I used the existing ECN sysctl, and if you set it to four, then it's accurate ECN. Um, but I think if you want to put it in the kernel, you can actually, or the goal would actually to use accurate ECN or to at least request accurate ECN by default instead of classic ECN. Because there's actually no reason why, if you have already accurate ECN implemented, why not to try and use it. Um, let me see what else is on here. Yeah, actually the implementation kind there is not even up to date because we did a few changes in the last draft version um, to be more sure we can detect any cases where middle box is mangling with the IP flex and so on, so we extended the mechanism a little bit more, and I finally didn't implement this, um, these last checks uh, in that implementation, so I really need to catch up there. Um, the other question about the implementation is uh, about the accurate ECN option, because currently the specification says you don't have to set it all the time. 
you only have to send it if there's any interesting information, so anything has changed, or there was a congestion uh, flag set, and you have to change it a few times per round of time at least to have, make sure that there's like, some kind of continuous feedback. However, there might be situations where you believe you don't need the, the option at all, just the field and the header is enough for you because you're in a data center and that's all you need. Um, or there might be a case where you don't care about the overhead and you always want an option just to make sure you have all the information you need. So that could be configured by some kind of inf interface if that's needed, I'm not sure. And then um, I guess if you want to go even further, you could even try to reorganize some of the code in the kernel um, and figure out and, and make the separation between ECN handling and loss handling more clear because sometimes it's kind of the same, but it's actually a very different signal. But I didn't do this in this patch, and probably it's something you, it, you would rather do before or after or whatever, not together with this change. So I could definitely need some help here if somebody's interested. <laughs> Any questions on accurate ECN so far? Um, this is a question and, uh, not regarding the Linux implementation, but regarding more like the RFC. Did you probe uh, for industry reception? Uh, I mean, is it going to be at the end an RFC plus Linux implementation? Or did you uh, get some hints from the industry that it's going to be accepted? I don't know, Microsoft, uh, Cisco, whatever, you know, the big names. A Juniper or anybody that is going to get involved in networking is going to add support for this. So, um, I mean, as the last point says here, it would also be nice to not only implement accurate ECN, but also use it with data center TCP then, because it's just safer, because you have to say negotiation. So data center TCP is used. I assume if we would change it in the kernel, people would use it there as well. Um, other than that, currently with the current congestion control, it doesn't give you a lot of benefit because there are no congestion controls that actually utilize this information at the moment. On the other hand, because you don't have this information, there's no congestion control that utilizes this information, right? So it's a chicken and egg problem. But there is ongoing work also in the IETF to make use of this signal. But only if you have some more, congestion, more modern congestion control that can use this signal, there's actually a real need for this me signaling mechanism. Um, do you have to have all the places in the hop able to handle this? Because I would think that what if something in the middle thought it knew what to do with an ECN and as so it was coming across, yeah. you know, it became, it was not the count bits, it was just a signal flag bit. So for accurate ECN, the part in the IP head has not changed, right? for the, the signaling in the IP header, which is what the network nodes do. For ECN itself, yes, you need support from the network. You need like this, this one point where you have the congestion. If that is not ECN enabled, you will still see drops, right? Uh, and but if so, but usually the congestion happens somewhere at the network border. So if you can make your routers ECN support. Well, I was thinking if it was some intermediate node that Supported ECN, but not accurate ECN. No, that's not necessary. Accurate okay. ECN is just on the TCP layer between the endpoints. Yep. So, um, actually, to maybe riff off of your question, I don't think Cisco or Juniper needs to support this, right? Their boxes support ECN already. This is built yeah. on the DCTCP yeah. idea. So. Microsoft, yes. My, Microsoft or Linux would have to support it, and if Linux has support, you'll get it for free. The bigger question I would have is DCTCP itself, right? Has, I mean, yes, we've all read the papers. It's talked about a lot. Have, do you have any industry to re rephrase or repeat the question? Is there any industry response on DCTCP actually being deployed? Because I personally have not seen a lot of in practice deployment, I've heard a lot of people talk about it, but uh, is there data? Like, is it stable? Does it create secondary congestion points? So I you don't know? have data <laughs> because okay. I don't work for those companies, but I believe that Microsoft is actually using it. I, I see somebody wants to answer. Actually, yeah. If somebody else can answer, that's even better. <laughs> yeah, so we use at Google uh, some kind of um, DCTCP uh, stuff, so we are using uh, 
ECN uh, signals. Yeah, I also believe Daniel Borgman, who actually implemented it in the kernel, had a customer request for it. So yeah, so we uh, we are not using exactly the CTCP, yeah. but it's a variant of uh, this stuff. The the one wor worry I have is uh, about TCP dump support because right now TCP dump is stateless, so uh, it won't be able to display the correct value of this uh, three bit in the TCP header. It will still display the the two. Legacy uh, ECN uh, bits instead of a counter. S well sorry, you sorry use now three bits yeah. for a value between yeah. zero and seven. Yeah. And normally, an updated TCP dump should be able to display. Oh, it's a g uh, it's using uh, hack ECN, so it should display a counter value. But uh, right now, TCP dump won't. It will just display a bit. So that's minor yeah, detail. Yeah. It's something else that needs to be updated. Yes. Yeah, but TCP dump is stateless, so it cannot r record the negotiation uh, on the scene syntax, so it will not really know. Yeah, but it can just it can just show you the bits, right? Yeah. There. It will just confuse the admin uh, doing the some TCP yeah. dump. That's it. Yeah. Sure. So it's the primary value that it allows you to um, uh, aggregate more packets on for the axe. Because right now with DCTCP, if you change a state from marked to unmarked, you know you have to return an ACK immediately. So th the main value of this is that you could return a one ACK that would ac acknowledge more packets, but then you could have the right number of markings. Is that the primary value for this? Not really. So with data center TCP, so we also require to send an ACK immediately, uh -huh. just because you get the feedback earlier, right? So it's actually yes. a good thing. And with data center TCP, you always have to send an ACK when the, the uh, when it changes, right? Mm -hmm. So you could even reduce the number of ACKs because it doesn't change that often. So kind of that's kind of the same here. Okay. So, why so, do but, so but the, benef the real benefit is that with data center TCP, you can actually get out of sync. There is a failure case where if you lose certain X, specific X, you're yes. completely out of sync. That cannot happen, like, or much harder here because you have those three flags, which are uh, three bits, which are actually... Have you done any coming. measurements about how much that gains you? Because this so TCP is averaging, so it takes yeah. a while to respond to the signals, right? It's it not immediate. Yeah. So I'm just wondering... Uh, how no, so it it's the same information you get provided. It's n it's not better information than data center TCP. It's just more safe, really. It's just like uh, if it's you more accurate, right? You're saying it's not more accurate no, than okay. data center TCP. It's more accurate than classic ECN, right? Uh -huh. But data center TCP gives you exactly the same information. It's just not very safe because if you if you, lo you lose the wrong X, which shouldn't happen in a data center, which is ECN enabled, but if you lose some X, you could actually co get completely out of sync, and then you have wrong information. But that's my question. Have yeah. you tested it to see? to see, actually see the TCP do poorly under those conditions, right? Because there's an assumption there. And, and my it's not really doing poorly, it's really getting out of sync. So I, I can't, so there is in the draft, is it in this draft? There is a draft where the analysis is in there, which says like, if this and this happens, then data, s data center TCP is kind of screwed. We, as I said, it should not okay. happen because you shouldn't lose anything in a data center, but it's just not safe. It's not better, it's just not that safe. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I think there is uh, an opportunity uh, with this uh, to help a better aggregation on a Jiro layer. If we can uh, still aggregate, right now Jiro won't aggregate a packet with different uh, C or ECT marks. It will just build different packets. Uh, in your proposal, uh, we can we could modify Jiro layer so that the aggregation still takes place but propagate in the new GSO uh, CE counts the exact number of packets which were marked with a C mark. So it should help it a lot uh, some performance. Uh, that's actually that's actually a good point because um, so that is possible, especially as we have this option which, which provides you all this more detailed information. Um, currently we in the in the draft we actually say if you see the counter uh, if you see the code point changing, you have to send an immediate egg. Um, because that also would allow you to kind of reconstruct the exact order of markings you have seen, which gives you additional information. Um, but that's actually a question we had in real deployment. If, if we re release this, you must immediate act, then you could aggregate more. And if that provides real benefit to deployment scenarios, we don't actually know. 
Okay. Um, let me move on a little bit because I'm running otherwise out of time. So um, what's the current state of ECN deployment? So this is classic ECN, but it doesn't really matter because um, kind of both the same. Um, so when it was first standardized, actually, there was um, kind of a lot of interest in this. It was implemented and deployed, and there was like this kind of first measurement, which has like we already have 8% of web server support very initially, which was pretty nice. But then it dropped down to to 1%, which was exactly this problem I was mentioning, where you see some home routers rebooting, and so the recommendation was just turn it off, right? And then. Um, at some point, people came up with the server mode idea. So um, just because there's server mode and um, at some point web servers update their OS, I guess, you see more and more um, support on web servers. Um, so we're currently somewhere here at 75%, which is pretty good for like the Alexa 1 million web top web servers. Um, the support in IPv6 is a little bit higher, but this is also much less um, IP addresses because not all of the Alexa top million unfortunately support IPv6 so it's, this was like a couple of hundred hosts only here and now it's a couple of thousand hosts I believe um, but this also just shows basically that probably um, the IPv6 machines are a little bit more up to date than the IPv4 machines but like if you turn on ECN on your machine right now there is a big chance that you can actually use it with a web server um, if you turn ECN on your machine right now there were a couple of uh, problems, so one, or there might be problems, one is that there are still machines out there that didn't uh, get the memo, basically, that the TOS field is not 8 bits anymore, but the diff cell field is only 6 bits. So they um, rewrite the whole TOS field, which is 8 bits, and they rewrite the IP, the ECN flags by this as well. So. Um, with an old study from 2011, there was about 25% of, of um, bleaching of the um, ECN options, which means just if you try to use it, it doesn't work. It doesn't break, but it also give doesn't give you any benefit. Um, we also measured a very small percentage um, of like 8% where we actually, we were on purpose setting the CE bit at the center side already, and we didn't get any feedback, which is an indication that there was some rewriting and this congestion information just got lost on the way, which is a little bit of a problem because that means if a router on the way is actually trying to tell you there's congestion and a router later on is just removing this signal, then you don't get the information. Um, it's actually less problematic if packets with a CE marking get dropped because that would any anyway happen if you don't have ECN support. Um, we observed this in a very few cases as well, but that doesn't happen very often actually. And we had also a very small number of connection failures where we just tried to use uh, or, or negotiate ECN and the connection would fail. However, um, there is a fallback, so you simply the next um, SYN packet, you don't use ECN and then it should work, so you have some initial delay and it was like a very small number of cases only. Yeah, but a lot of things can break, but it seems to kind of work right now. Um, and uh, what happened in the meantime is that actually um, Apple is trying to deploy ECN. So what they did in uh, iOS 9 and 10 and Mac OS, um, Sierra and El Capitan is that they uh, randomly select a certain number of connections and enable EC ECN with it. So initially it was only 5%, but now it's like 50% of all connections. If you have a Mac, already try to use ECN. Um, they actually had some initial problems. There was like one mobile operator where, where they just saw a lot of reordering if they're trying to use ECN. That was probably again like one of the toss problems they had. But what they did, because it was one carrier, they talked to the carrier, they fixed their boxes, it's working now. Um, and um, last time they reported on this, they also saw an increasing number of uh, support of ECN in the network where actually routers were marking um, packets as congested. So it's kind of taking up, probably because like one big company is interested in it and so uh, the pressure is, is going up there. So, but anyway, what Apple did is that they um, implemented a couple of heuristics to detect if there's a failure case and then fall back to non-ECN. Like things like high reordering, they would just not use ECN anymore. Um, if you get a reset during handshake, they would not use ECN anymore. If you lose the SYN, you don't use e ECN anymore, and so on and so on. So at that point, my question really is, can we also try to enable ECN in the Linux kernel by default? Do we need these heuristics? What kind of heuristics? And like, I would even like to use accurate ECN by default. Um, if there's interest. Question. Um, so 
How do we know that the uh, the routers are actually marking um, bits correctly or not just burst burst like? So you mean uh, these numbers here? No, no. I mean, so it's possible that I know. I know there was a discussion about right, like red and all that stuff, like doing the uh, all the marking and all that stuff, right? But um, I'm not sure if that was carried on. And basically, I don't know like, what kind of like you know marking with which probability the uh, you know the routers are doing. So yeah. how can we actually uh, make sure that we are not really affected by uh, what of the marking that the routers are doing? So this is actually t actually more a question for accurate ECN than ECN because um, it's the same for loss, right? For loss, you can also use some kind of AQM, and then you see more or less losses depending on what kind of AQM you use, and the congestion control will react in one or other way on the on the on the information. And just because you don't know what's deployed in the network, you always have this kind of um, slack where you could probably further optimize if you would know it. But as you don't know, you have to be prepared for everything. That's like one of the problems with congestion control. Um, with accurate ECN, where you actually, um, where, the, where the idea is to use the level of congestion, it depends even more. But as everybody sharing the bottleneck gets the same, gets the same feedback, it's also not such a problem, as long as they react somehow in a useful way to it. So I think, th so I, I don't, I don't think there's a problem. If you would know, you could optimize more, but it works. Yes, but you need a mic. <laughs> uh, do you have any information about the uh, adoption of the QCN protocol, quantified congestion protocol, if you're yeah, familiar I don't, I with? Um, I have seen it somewhere. I don't think it's kind of followed on, on anywhere, right? So I don't think there are any plans to okay. implement, use it, or whatever. Okay. Yeah, let me know if you're interested in helping me with my patch. Otherwise, thank you.